Hey everybody, you are tuned in to Hanging With Here To Zen, the show that is a place for people who love all kinds of music. We really hope you enjoy your time with us today. Make sure you hit subscribe if you already haven't and hit that notification bell to be kept up to date. We would love to hear from you over on our social media platforms, so just search Here To Zen and you'll find us. Lastly, could you leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or Google Podcasts or wherever you're going to be tuning in from? Those reviews help other people to find us. So we appreciate the reviews and the support. Thanks so much for tuning in. This episode is proudly presented by One World Entertainment and the Smashing Pumpkins The World is a Vampire Festival. Running from April 15 through to April 30. Go to oneworldentertainment.com.au for more information. And now on with the show. So you're here February 8th to a kicking off. Um, I bet you're looking forward to jumping on the plane. Oh, man, this is a long flight, but everybody has their, uh, you know, little ways they get through it all. And we've been all talking about it. So we're ready. You know, we, we're kind of like, uh, I don't want to say old pros at this, but we're old at this. And we've done a lot of flights. And it's just the price for getting to go somewhere somewhere ultra cool. And we've always loved Australia, partially because it is so far away. Yeah. <laughs> so it's part of the game, you know? And most bands that have been stuck for the last three years are just, even if it's a 20-hour flight, let alone like a 14 or 16-hour, they'll take it. Yeah. I mean, definitely COVID made us ready to rock. But um, we've also been in the studio all of January. Nobody's gone anywhere. Nobody's done anything fun. We are so ready to just go meet people, you know, yeah. and do whatever. So I think we're ready to, we'll probably go too hard the first couple of days. But, you know, this is this is a short adventure. We're only going to be there for eight days. So we're excited. Yeah. About it. And what are fans going to expect from the shows with such a vast career? Well, it's hard. It's really hard to pick a set list when you, I mean, we've only been to Australia a few times. It's been decades apart every time where it's not like we have the newest record we're working on out or anything. So I think we're just looking at it as like, we're going to come play as long as you can stand it. And we are going to play everything from all over the catalog. You know what I mean? Like, all of the records are basically available on the internet to most people. So we're just going to try to like pick what people most commonly want to hear and just kind of give everybody what they want. Yeah, You know what I mean? Which isn't something that we say that too often, but we're saying it now, you know what I mean? Excellent. Like it's been a while since we've been in Australia, like I said, and I think we just want people to walk into the show and hear basically like what is darkest hour all about? Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, I always love doing a quick, you know, Wikipedia look on a band before I interview them. And, you know, they, they class you as a blend of melodic death metal and metal core. So how do you think that accurately describes the band? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a little heavy metal in there, too. But it's hard when you've been a band for almost 30 years and you've put out, a like uh almost you know 10 full length records and yep. you sort of have dipped into different categories we have some real heavy stuff we have some real melodic stuff and world metal has changed hardcore has changed music's changed so things that were like super extreme are now just lumped into the world of metal so i yep. think it's like that that's close enough you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah, actually, no, I agree. I, I sometimes have to laugh at like Wikipedia because I go, isn't it just music at the end of the day and it's what you want to take away from it as a listener? Well, I, I mean, we fought the metalcore tag for a real long time because uh, in the early stages, there was sort of some negative connotation to it. But now there's been so many subgenres of even metalcore, let alone metal music, that we don't really, it's like fighting the ocean current, you know? We just yep. sort of, let it happen. And I think uh, it's so easy for people to hear some of the music that d explaining stuff now is a little bit arbitrary because you're literally reading it on a device. Usually you could just listen to it on. Yeah. But anyway, no, no, the no, quick, quick answer is yes, that's pretty close. 
I, I agree because like all the subgenres, I think, you know, who got really stoned to make up that name and why were they so stoned? Well, yep. you know, they were More probably listening to... to heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> now, you formed the band 25 years ago. Did you honestly think you'd be going 25 years later? I mean, I, I honestly, we've had to fight and endure so many fucked up situations uh and the sacrifices that people take to to do music i don't think people who aren't in bands or around bands really realize like how much you have to sacrifice and people yeah. do to just attempt at the lifestyle that we've been able to have and so i think part of that comes with like it's always just been sort of who we were like ever since i started going to shows and listening to heavy metal and playing in a band it just was a sort of all encompassed my life so i never really saw a part of my life where i wouldn't be playing music but yep. i definitely didn't know if like darkest hour was gonna be that band but i've made a lot of choices along the way that were like oh that's a great opportunity but i'd yep. rather just stick with this stupid thing and all my friends and ride yeah. it out <laughs> Now I see a bunch of EVH cabs behind you. What kind of oh, influence yeah. does he have on on the players in the band, if any? Well, first of all, he's the goat of all time when it comes to the you know uh, neoclassical heavy metal shred. I mean, you know, he we we love Eddie Van Halen. Although everybody has a lot of different influences in the band, I think the more importantly though, not only for our love for his playing <clears throat> and David Lee Roth and Van Halen and alex and you know um everybody you know what i'm saying like alec alex and anthony and wolfgang and whatever honestly it's the it's the the gear like yeah. these eddie van halen's been making amps for a real long time and these amps that are behind me are uh the amps we've been using forever uh here at, at, on tour and we just have a, so many of them that we just stick them everywhere like <laughs> yeah see they're all over the place yep and uh we we have them, you know, for really if we need to go do that big concert staging thing, but a lot of times they just live here and they're the only amps we've used forever. So on top of being an amazing uh anthems to all of our parties, Eddie Van Halen has influenced our sound because to us these are the best modern gain, you know, amplifiers. And when you come see us in Australia, we probably won't be using them. We're gonna be using whatever anybody's got down in all these cities. So we'll see. Yeah. We have a lot of tricks that we pull to make stuff sound good. So you, I, you won't be seeing any of this stuff in Australia, yeah. but don't worry about it because uh, it's all in the fingertips. Are you, are you old school or have you gone Kemper? Oh, no. I mean, I do have a Kemper right here that you can't see off screen. I love it. I use it yep. all the time for demos. But for live, we have to have an amp. I mean, we're very entrenched in like, that experience of the 90s almost i mean we were born of the 90s 1995 yep. so to us it's like amp drum kit amp amp guy screaming his ass off i mean it's been Perfect. that for the whole time and the thing is our drummer is so loud that it's like you really we've attempted to use different types of amp emulator stuff like that and you have to rely too much on the monitors and yep whatever you know and and also a lot of almost every one of my guitar heroes there's something about the the amp and the, the magic of just that roar of the connection when yep. you see it yeah so i just don't know if it would feel the same so we're amp, we're amp guys cool. what, what's your favorite guitar that you own Ooh. yeah i can show it yeah sure <sighs> yeah. this is the Mike Schleibaum MSV1 from ESP. It's an LTD. It's my signature model. Ooh. There's my sig signature on the back. Anyway, this was designed by the amazing people at ESP. And then yep. they made a production model that people can buy. And the one that I use live is the exact same one. And this one here, here this yep. is just a regular old ESP LTD tuned to C that I just like this one I love, right? And yep. I mean, I got a bunch. I have a really fancy one that's at the studio that I've been using that I've been posting on the internet about. But this one, this is the one you'll see. Okay, you know? yep. And I love this. This is this is just like a pure shred killing machine right here. Just simple. Yeah. You know, nothing that's going to break on this. 
that that extra part of the cutaway there is that so you can get more access to the the tremolo well this is a this is the esp aero design and i yep. think that they they designed this so of course you could get complete access up here but i can if i don't if, not to get too geeky on you uh yep. you know yeah. people but i really think it's about this part yep. because when you wear a strap this sits here yeah you move your leg forward or you can rest the, the on there yep. when you're shredding and to me this just makes it super ergonomic yep. and i just don't think a lot of v's have that so i think it's mostly about this cutaway for me yep. but this that's this what is I why i love it too i actually thought that cutaway would make it so much easier yeah did, yeah just uh, probably a little bit lighter too yeah this thing i'm telling you this is full access full support you know i think if you watch a lot of shredders who use pointy guitars you'll see they use the points to maybe anchor themselves when they're moving yep and i think this one to me that's my favorite so yeah it helps so, me get her done so we'll get to see that one in a couple of weeks oh yeah now where are you guys at with new music like you said you know you've probably been in the studio and things like oh, that. My... So where are you at man well we have an album it's awesome it's like almost done we're gonna yep. take a break actually because there's a lot of I mean, a lot of this stuff is, is done on the computer. There's a lot of like cleaning up that goes in to do whatever. So well, right now we're just in full on. Everybody track everything they want, put it on there. We're going to go, we're going to let the engineers take a break. I mean, they, we've been going yep. nonstop 12 hours a day. Right. Let them come in, get everything sorted to be able to almost be mixed. And then we're going to come back from Australia, having been able to just sit on some things, then you know if we want to like uh recut something here or just kind of like tweak something we have a little bit more time because in the past we've sort of just like done it done mixed and then like a month later like fuck what if i just <laughs> so this is really this is really i think great because especially as a unit we've just been working so hard not only over the past couple of years but just in the past month on this and everybody's kept a really level head but we really yearn for the adventure of being in a band. So uh, I think this is just a really nice like reward to be able to, to kind of like have been working on the record and leave and come back, but yep. it should be done by the end of the month. And then we've got a couple of music videos we're going to film and, you know, we're going to have a, a, obviously the records coming out later this year on a undisclosed yet announced partner, which I can't talk about, but, uh, everybody we encourage everybody to follow along on this thing that we have called a patreon it's yep. just a um website that basically you just pay a monthly subscription but we've been posting all sorts of like extra downloads old records that we've live records you know a bunch of totally awesome behind the scenes stuff you can hear a ton of clips of the new music that we're working on and everything in the in the background and everything like we've we've put a lot more content there than anywhere because we're kind of just really rewarding the people who have just paid a little every month to be able to help us fund what we've been doing because we haven't uh been on a record label in a real long time yeah and being during the pandemic was super hard for us financially and that became a way for us to just connect people with people online and yeah do stuff that way and now it's sort of bled over into that's where you get all the cool stuff because these people have really helped make it happen. And then eventually the record will come out and all everything will come out. We want to share everything, of course, but uh, I encourage people to follow us there. And we're also pretty loud on our social media. So the, the news about where you'll get it, how you'll get it, when you'll get it, that's all coming, but just know Perfect. you're gonna get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do we get any sneak peeks while you're down here? Ooh, shit. You think I'm I'm on the pay grade to answer that? Uh, I don't know, man. Um, it's tough because I, uh, we want to give everybody s stuff from every catalog, yeah. like something they might love that they never heard. I'm not sure. Do they want to hear a brand new song? I don't know. Like maybe they want would rather hear a song that they know yep. way to connect. Like I think that's part of why it's so hard to know whether we should do that, but sometimes we just get wild and do it and i'm telling you the one thing that's unique about this record is that before we went in we could play everything and do everything the way we would do it live already right so yep. we could so right. <laughs> whether I, I, we will i, I don't know <laughs> i love bands that are like that that you know 
Is yeah, we could. That's what. No, this was really excited, uh, exciting about it this time is that, you know, it's it's finished. We're ready, but it's okay. going to take a little longer till we can roll it out. You know, awesome. And as we finish up today, Mike, what do you want to use as your little final goodbye before saying hello to Australia? Oh man! Well, first of all, thank you for uh, using your platform to uh, let everybody know about Darkest Hour because. You know, we've been around for a long time, but we always like to meet new people and reach new people and metalheads. There's so many of them, you know what I mean? So thank you for letting us get out there. And also, we want to encourage anyone who lives in Australia, look, it's hard to get there. We don't come there that often, and we are coming to play. So get down there, you know what I mean? And let's do this, because we, we love heavy metal. We love a heavy metal party, and there's only six shows. We're all about it. This is what we live for, to like get on a plane, Go on an adventure, rehearse our asses off, and and do what we do. So we want to see everybody there. And I think that's my only message is, you know, Perfect get Mark. on out. We're coming next week. I'm getting on the plane and, like, I'll be on my way to Australia in a week from now, which is wild to say. It's great, man. Look forward to seeing you soon, Mike, and thanks for your time today. Yeah, man. Well, hey, uh, send me that record if you ever need to clean house. And until then, man, cheers, dude. I hope thanks, to man. see you at one of these shows. If you're coming, say what's up. Give me a high five. We, we Am I not coming there. to your city? Oh, sick. All right. All right. Excellent. Well, we're going to we'll do a shot then. All right. Excellent. Thanks, man. Bye. Cheers later. The world is a vampire. The Smashing Pumpkins are coming down Same. under this April for their World is a Vampire Festival. With special guests, Jane's Addiction, Amel and the Sniffers, and more. Plus, professional wrestling, the NWA versus Australia's best. Tickets on sale now at oneworldentertainment.com.au. The Smashing Pumpkins World is a Vampire Festival. Get your tickets now.